Doc, thanks so much for joining us. This is uh, just another example of how cooperation amongst researchers and sharing data really helps build up a full picture of COVID-19. This meta-study that you were involved with, it, it brought together a lot of people across a number of countries. Explain how the study was done and what exactly you were looking at. So this is, you nailed it uh, completely, everything that you, that you just said. This, this is a gigantic consortium of scientists from all across the world that are very early in the pandemic. We, we just, we, we weren't all from the field of infectious disease, but we all wanted to contribute uh, with our own expertise in genetics. And so the COVID-19 host genetics initiative started with researchers really from all across the world. And I, I do believe some from South Africa too. Um, and essentially, we we did we recruited more than a million participants in our first study, and we found that there was a uh, clear signal at one of the uh, on a location of the genome that is very close to a gene called OAS1, which is which is the gene that you described. That uh, for some people, there are uh, variants that are protective uh, for severe COVID, but but that was just the first step. And, and as a first step, that's all we knew really about it. Um, we knew there was something going on statistically there, but we didn't really know why it was the case and uh, which OAS1 protein was actually protective for COVID-19. And this is when we realized really, hey, you know, the COVID-19 is GI, um, even if we have more than a million participants, the vast majority are really European ancestry. And, and so maybe we can look at other... Dr. Uh, Dr. Guillaume Butler Laporte, uh, your picture seems to have frozen. Let's just try once more to see if we can reconnect. Can you hear me? Oh, yes. Hi, we just lost you for a moment. You were just talking to us oh, about I'm sorry. the protein. Um, and and yes. it's, um, am, I, am I right? And, and forgive me if I put this in extreme layman's terms, but it, it centers around the length of a protein in one of the gene variants. Um, and the longer the, 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 the protein string, the better in terms of combating uh, or not being severely hit by COVID. Yes, apologies if it, uh, if it, if it dropped. Uh, in a way, that's the case. What we found essentially, because uh, we realized that, that we had overstudied the European ancestry population. Uh, and we, when we compared uh, people with uh, African ancestry, sub-Saharan Africa ancestry uh, population to those of European ancestry, uh, we really realized that all of a sudden this story about this specific protein that is longer in terms of length than, than the usual one, quote unquote, is actually protective for COVID-19. To be entirely truthful, it's not the length of the protein itself, it's it's it, 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 it's the way it's it's used essentially. Mm -hmm. um, the the, the the additional length to it is actually actually encodes for something that it is, is even more lethal for COVID. What is, explain to me the difference between uh, what you found in people of African origin and people of European origin. And it really is quite a sharp difference. And, and whether you know why. So uh, we actually know why. Uh, in Sub-Saharan Africa is where in the world you find the most genetic uh, variation. Um, and this is where you find uh, uh, so, so it's, it's OAS1 is not the only area of the human genome where you find a lot more variation in, 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 in patient, yeah. patient and, and participants of uh, African ancestry. So, so the only problem is that we, we never actually, well, we do, but um, we don't enroll them as much in our genetic studies, unfortunately, for all sorts of reasons. And so this is a great example that, you know, enrolling them and studying them actually provides us a lot more knowledge yeah. into what's going on. So am I right that 80% of the, of the African people that you studied had this gene variant that protects more against COVID compared to about 20% of people of European descent? Yes, so it's, it's probably closer to 60, 70% in African and probably closer to 30% um, uh, in, in European. But, but generally speaking, that's the case. Now, it's important to remember that um, this is not 100% uh, protective. However, the great thing about the research we did and the results we obtained is that even if it's not protective 100% in the community, mm -hmm. the drugs and the therapies that we can derive from this, and we're working on it right now, these can be way more beneficial than, than the genetic effect we observe. 
All right, so this finding is really helpful in terms of developing drugs against COVID. Could it also explain, for example, why um, infection rates and deaths in Africa seem to have been a lot lower than in other parts of the world, even allowing for the fact that we have underreported across many parts of Africa? There's no question that there's genetic determinants of, of severe COVID-19. There's also social determinants of it. Generally uh, speaking, the population in, in, in Africa is younger than, than in uh, European and North American countries. So there's, there's other explanation, and, and nobody can claim it's only genetics. There's, but there's no question that genetics plays a role. And so at this locus, it seems like a, a population of African ancestry uh, would fare better, but there are other locus. And, and so it's all a bit of a balancing act. Uh, I, I, unfortunately, African ancestry individuals I, I haven't been really studied enough to, to give a more clear answer, but there's no question of genetic determinants of COVID-19. It's completely fascinating research. Thank you so much for chatting to us about all of this this evening. Dr. Guillaume Butler-Laporte, he's a genetic epidemiologist at McGill University Health Centre in Montreal, Canada.